internet is full of hundreds and hundreds of shop tour videos. I thought I might add to the noise level by showing you mine. This one's in the basement of my roughly 100-year-old home. The shop is about 72 square feet, and I think it used to be a coal bin or a root cellar. So let's get started. Come on in. So we're inside the shop, and we'll just sort of rotate around here. We have some storage for miscellaneous fluids and glues and caulks and bluing agents. Here's a rack for all the sort of measuring and marking and layout tools. And that is just above a surface plate. I picked this one up surplus for about a hundred bucks. It was a great find. Stepping back a little bit here, you can see my bench vise and the cabinet I made last year for my taps and dies. Sort of a usual assortment of hand tools. In this corner, we have a nice self-contained buffing unit I picked up a little while ago. Above that on the wall is a cabinet for the buffs and the buffing compound. So you can see there's a shelf for each compound and a wheel that goes with it. This is a tr little trick I learned from my father who was a jeweler. You always store the coarsest grid at the bottom and the finest at the top. So if some stuff trickles down, you won't be leaving scratches in your polish. Next on the wall is this cabinet which contains all of my magnification toys. I've got a jeweler's loop, several of those, um, a dentist or surgeon's illuminated uh, telescope eyepiece, and you've also got um, some safety glasses and my headlamp. Bench grinder. Even with the um, foam dampening mounts under that, it tends to vibrate that shelf, so there's nothing else stored on that. Above that, collection of pliers. You can see a uh, Dremel. You've got a hacksaw and a collection of my metal-only uh, drill bits. We've got literature. Plans, uh, manuals, machinery's handbook there in the corner. Up above is an improvised uh, vent fan for the room that vents out through the window well. A whole bunch of lathe parts, steady rests, gears. You see an arbor press in the corner. Down on this counter, there are vices, both milling and sort of hand vise, and some tool posts. Which brings us to the main machine in the room, which is a combination mill, drill, lathe in the characteristic grizzly green. This isn't the best machine in the world. As a mill, it's a far better lathe but it's good enough for most everything I do. If I were if I were going to upgrade, I would consider getting two smaller um, desktop machines, but I don't know if that's ever going to happen. On the wall behind the lathe, you've got a shelf with tools. You can see the quick change tool holders on a rack above. Collets. A 
And finally over in this corner, you've got all the sort of hold down and set up equipment. And right in the middle there you see a Fordham rotary tool that I inherited from my father. By an interesting coincidence, the diameter of this handpiece matches the diameter of one of the boring bar holders for the quick change tool post. Now the lower level is open on this side. Someday I want to put a um, cooling fluid reservoir and pump and equip this lathe with a, um, a cooling system. There are some shelves over here. Or some. There are some drawers over here with miscellaneous tooling in them. On the other side, we have some stock. This is the 12L14. There's a drawer full of 1018. And below that, my cordless drill and a go bag for electrical emergencies. We've got files, some miscellaneous ferrous stock with a couple of nice plates of aluminum. Plumbing equipment, plumbing tools, plumbing go bags. All of my sharpening tools. Tool handles, some miscellaneous aluminum, a drawer full of works in progress, another drawer full of work in progress, and a drawer full of mixing and stirring stuff. This drawer is full of jewelry tools. I do a fair bit of jewelry repair in here. And this is sort of a miscellany drawer. Below that, another miscellaneous drawer. We have tape, batteries, plastic, copper, brass, and bronze, aluminum, and more tape. Here are a couple of important features. The first A ring holder just inside the door. Most of the stuff in here can seriously mess up your jewelry while you're working, so I put my wedding ring on this little rack. Just inside the doorway we've got this boot scraper. This keeps the swarf from traveling all over the rest of the house and chewing up uh, everybody's feet. Everybody that has a workshop or everybody that lives with somebody with a workshop knows that they tend to fill the available space and creep into other areas of the house, and this one's no exception. Because just outside the door of the workshop is this area, which is my clamp storage, solvents, paint thinners, stains, silicon mold making supplies, another workbench, my metal cutting band saw on casters underneath the bench. Paint, putties, rattle cans, and finally, the Richard Austin Memorial Hardware Library. Every single one of those black and yellow Harbor Freight boxes is full of miscellaneous hardware. About a third of it I inherited from my father. On the back wall are my masonry tools, drywall tools, anything having to do with mud. The big brown thing there is my insulated 
winter jumpsuit for working in the garage or outdoors and then there's a bunch of different material storage behind that and creeping out onto the floor this area adds another 70 or so square feet to what you could call my workshop